who are we talking to here? Oksana Masters. Oksana Masters. And you're rowing with the Louisville Rowing Club in their adaptive program. Yep. And how long have you been doing it? Uh, this is like my seventh year, I think. Your seventh year? Are you in school? Yeah. I'm a senior. I have like a week left of school and then I'm a done. A week left of school and then you, then what are you going to do? Go crazy? College. Oh, college. Party first and then college. No. Party first and then college. What brought you to rowing as opposed to doing something else? Randy Mills. Randy Mills. Yeah. Seems to have a commonality with a lot of people. He huh? does. He gets his way around somehow. <laughs> now, how did you meet him? Um, I think at my middle school, he was the person who makes sure it's like, I have PE and make sure that I can do everything okay and all that kind of so stuff. So he, he was really working for the middle school at the time. Yeah, he's for the schools. Tom Stokes, who was our first wheelchair rower, we, we ran the uh, wheelchair basketball program here in town. So Tori Murden, the, the woman who rode across the Atlantic Ocean, uh, approached us about uh, starting the adaptive program. So that's how we got involved. We're, we're growing this summer because we're getting more students uh, who I see through the school system that are coming out. So you're involved with disabled people in the school system? Yeah, I'm the adaptive physical education resource teacher for Jefferson County Schools, for, which has about 96,000 students. Okay. 13,000 of those students are classified uh, in special ed of some form. Okay. And so that's that's the, the pool of people that could, could yeah, be that's attracted. one pool. One pool that could uh, be attractive to. Our program, the students cannot be start in our program until they leave the fifth grade that summer when they're going into middle school uh -huh. then they can start in our program and so we have many adults young adults uh, uh, students that have gone off to college and come back and rode that rode with us as children really so you've made a difference in an awful lot of lives right yeah we're hoping that some can ultimately uh, uh, try out for a university team and mm -hmm. say for some of our petite uh, mm -hmm rowers that uh, couldn't row sweep, but yet they could learn to cox. So something for everybody. Yeah. Now in terms of disability, what, what is the minimum disability you will work with and what's the maximum disability you'll work with? Well, if, the that minimum, may, if that makes sense. No, it's, no, it's a very good question because uh, we go to the Bayada Regatta, which is the oldest and largest adaptive regatta in the world. It's in Philadelphia. And it's, up there you tend to see more physical, obvious physical disabilities. Some might have a stroke or something like that, but, uh, and we started working with kids with uh, cognitive disabilities, uh, uh, vision, maybe emotional, yes, vision. Uh, they do have some blind rowers, we, we've had some, but they haven't stuck out the program. Mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, uh, we had a, a young man that had Tourette's syndrome. You wouldn't know it if you saw him. Right. Uh, this program is very good for him. We think because of using both arms and legs, mm -hmm. he didn't have any of the of the out verbal outburst or tics, uh, nervous tics right. or something like that. And he became such a very good rower that his first competition he went into, he beat an older gentleman that was a single amputee. And on the award stand, he said, "You know what? You really need this first place award." And so the gentleman took second, so they just swapped awards. Oh my goodness! So we offered him to be a partner rower with our uh, with our program. So wow. he's graduating from high school this year, and he'll be back this summer. Uh, so uh, he helps us out a great deal. And then we have uh, students with uh, that might have graduated from school that have cognitive disabilities. These are individuals you might see participating in Special Olympics, uh, and. And then we have our double leg amputees, uh, uh, cerebral palsy. So uh, we, we go the whole gamut. We give anybody a try and then uh, uh, see how it works out for them. How long have you been rowing all together, just in your uh, life? 13 years. 13 years. And you've been coaching? 12. 12 of them. Yeah. Yeah. What got you started um, coaching in the adaptive program? Just Randy Mills needing help to do it, watching. I've coached the high school programs for the through the years, and really watching how their some of their rowers could be a lot better than they were, and just cleaning them up, making them row more efficiently, and 
-hmm. and helping them out do that. They really didn't have anybody that was doing that. So through the years, I would just kind of jump in and help out when I could. And then two, three years ago, I went ahead and went pretty much full time on Saturday mornings with them to help them out. Uh -huh. so, so you you wanted to see their strokes get better? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there were a lot of them that wanted to wanted to be better. You could just tell a lot of them were just getting frustrated. So if I could help out, I just jumped in and. Mm -hmm. And then when I did start coaching a couple of them, the response was pretty good. They were pretty receptive to it, and and uh, you know they felt better. They went faster, so I just continued doing it with them. I see. So when you when you first observed them, you were co you were coaching able-bodied people, and right. you saw this other activity kind of going on on the right. side. Yeah. And what what really interested you about it? Just to see them improve, or yeah, I. Mostly just the the rowers themselves improving. It's it's just not fun being a coach watching people row poorly, and it's, like I said, I have a bad habit of throwing my two cents in when I see somebody doing that. And uh -huh. so I like I said through the years, like uh, Tom Stokes and some of the other Jenny, some of the other rowers, they were going to Biota, but you could just tell they could be a lot better by watching what was going on here. Mm -hmm. So just by helping them out, made them better rowers and kind of stepped the program up another level and mm -hmm. trying to get the, the new people started right, which just improves their rowing faster. So everybody gets better rows in, more efficient rows and better workouts, so feel better about it. So we'll work with just about anybody and figure out how to put you on the water and then figure out progressively how to make you more comfortable out there and eventually we get you to where you want to come back and row. Um, what kind of, a, of an adaptive situation do you have that got you into this program? Uh, mainly my legs. I'm a bilateral knee disartic. And what does that mean? That my legs are cut off at the knee. You row just arms only? No, I row arms and trunk. Because Arm, I can move my arms. Arms and trunk. And, and how, how do you grip the oar? I noticed your hands have some... Uh, I just grip it like a normal person. Tom is the first person I rode. Yeah. I don't think he rows anymore, though. Yeah. <laughs> and what was special about Tom? He was just, I don't know, he's, I loved his personality, and it was just, like, really fun to row it. And, like, he made it seem like I've done it before. And, oh, yeah? Like, I don't know. He was really patient. Yeah. And funny. Was it kind of scary when you first started? No. I love this kind of stuff. You love this kind of stuff, so you were going to eat it up, but he was the right person for you at the time. Yeah. So it must be very rewarding to see all this happen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it, as you look back over your uh, your time um, that you've now invested in the program, uh, what's touched you the most, you know, just from a personal point of view and and seeing what happens to the, the adaptive rowers? Seeing them do it. I mean, it's, like I said, I've never had a lot of experience with this. And growing up, I've, we've never had anybody in the family with a disability or anything. So, And then realizing that they can do what they can do is pretty amazing. And um, just watching them work out in the gym and realizing how much effort they have to put in to f maintain just any kind of fitness and and how they feel good about doing it, where most able-bodied people, if you don't lift more than you did the week before, you don't feel like you've gained anything. These people will work with the same weights for weeks, and really, you can just see that they're doing everything they can do. So it's, it's pretty neat to watch that. When they come down here, just watching them improve on the water, like uh, one girl with Down syndrome last year wouldn't even row all the way down the chute without stopping two or three times. And this year, she's down here rowing all the way the whole length of the channel, this the island, and having a ball. So you can really just, you kind of watch them grow up, I guess, some of them. So just understanding that they can do stuff that maybe last year they didn't want to do. So it's a big difference. I mean, I, I personally have not had a lot of experience until I started this and talking with, with several of the people there's 
like everything, levels of them accepting it and then moving on and then at some point they get to the point where they're willing to come out and do something like this. So, and when we get to that point, then yeah, that um, it's very, very good for them. boat just kind of moves on at an old pace but at the end of the stroke if you drag off all that energy but what you're doing is you're is you're bringing the blades to here and then you're feathering them and just dragging them back out through the through the water instead of coming to the finish popping them up and rolling them up over top of the water and you can't really feel it because it's not that big of a drag but if I hit you just leave your blade leave your blade but it's a definite effect. I mean, I could sit there and watch the front of the boat, and when you're not dragging them out, you pop them out, the front of the boat just kind of runs, it just kind of does this. The whole boat just kind of jumps. When you drag it out, it just kind of settles and just kind of moves. So you're losing an extra two or three feet on each stroke. Okay. So, I know your aerobics aren't that great. We're going to start working on building your aerobics back up for a longer road. But You've got to learn to get the blades out every stroke, no matter how bad you just want to pull it as long as possible. You can't do it. You've got to fight it. Okay? And it'll make so a lot of sense. Here. Just kind of sit at the finish. Where your hands are right here, like where your blue the line right there. Think about pushing them down right there because you can. But look you how get, far. See, so you're not pushing them hard. And when I do that, the blades come up so hard. You don't have to push them that far. Sit at the finish. Just sit at the feet. Bring the handle back to you. Now, just kind of push your forearms down real gentle. That's all you got to do. See? There's where you are. And you're not even going to feel it because it's like two inches. Okay. It's not like what you're doing is you're kind of jerking yourself into the finish. Yeah. Instead of coming to the finish, just boom, right down and around. So think about one way you kind of think of this. Just think about the finish as being here. So you're going to come in, down, and around, and there's your finish, instead of wet right at the end of the stroke. See if it doesn't make more sense, is that's just the end of the, it's where you're just kind of releasing the water in the stroke, but you're not finished, so you've got to come down and around. I mean, just sitting here paddling like this, just, I mean, just take a couple strokes on the square, just a little bitty strokes, you don't even have to push hard. Take, now take and pull them real far behind you, doing the same thing, and just kind of drag them out of the water and see what it feels like. It might be part of your steering problem. I know, I'm stronger on one side than the other. I know, but you can compensate for that every couple of strokes if you get them out clean, though. But if you're if you're dragging them out, one's coming out, maybe coming out sooner than the other one. And that may be, because right, yeah. right at the end of the stroke is going to be your most detrimental for where you're going to steer from. off each stroke on a thousand meter race and you're going to add 20 strokes to it. So that's the way you got to think about it. Okay. 
No. One nice thing is you, you really kind of watch them grow up. You watch them mature. I mean, when Oxana came down and a lot of the high school kids, they're, I would consider them kind of immature. They're 14, they're 13, they're at that awkward age. They don't know where they belong, what they want to do. And then but four years later, you really see them as more of an adult with a little more confidence and a, a lot more understanding that they can do stuff that a lot of their friends can't do or won't do and so and in her case she's overcome a lot to get oh to yeah. this oh yeah oh yeah yeah she's and uh you know she's gone to the point now where biata they've talked about her training for the paralympics so we've gone and, to and that w- and what is biata for for the viewers uh, that might not biata know. is a race that the biata nursing association in philadelphia philadelphia has started years ago as a, a, a their physical therapist nursing association I'm, I think is what you would call them but the man that owns it started this program for the disabled in Philadelphia so every year they hold probably the biggest disabled Olympic or not Olympic but rowing event in the country and uh, they'll have categories for every disability and uh, partner rowers, singles, doubles, they're using it as a qualifying race for the Paralympics this year. So now uh, several of your rowers have attended that over the years and yeah, they've gone. and they've come back with medals and, and these oh, yeah. kinds of things. Yeah, they've gone for I think well since we've started, I think they're 96, 97 was the first year they've started going when the program first started, a couple people went up just to see what it was. And it's grown since then. We've taken as many as 15, 20 people up there. We're like the second biggest organization at the event a lot of times. And I think that the rowing, the adaptive program here is one of the biggest in the country, third, second, third well, biggest. Compete in the also? Yeah. Tell me about that. Um, we have annual races in Philadelphia, I yeah. think. Yeah. That's where it is. And um, it's like every year. And then I actually did like last um, like a few months ago. I did the head of the Ohio race with someone. Now, what was the distance and all of that kind of thing? Oh, it was a two point seven miles or something. I don't know, two point one miles, something like that. It was a long one. Yeah, and so this guy, he's actually um, going for the. He's going to the Olympics this year. Yeah. The Paralympics. Yeah. And that's who I rode with. And. Um, we we were in our own little class division. There was like arms only, and then right. arms and trunks and right. all that. And we beat everybody out of the race and made like um, like almost a record timing and everything. Is that right? So you got a medal out of that? Yeah. <laughs> Do you have more than one medal for other races you've been in? This is my shirt, actually, from Head of the Ohio. It's so that's place. the Head of the Ohio. Oh, well, let's get this. Yeah. <laughs> this is the uh, the first place winner. Yeah. Now, are you rowing by yourself in these races, or are you? Are yeah, you I row by with myself, a... and then I row with doubles. So if you were if you were talking to uh, a young man or young yeah. woman that was considering rowing and had similar physical issues, what would you tell them? I tell them that nothing's impossible. Well, things are impossible. Are what you make impossible. You have to have an open mind coming into things, and you'll be amazed from what you can accomplish. Okay. Champ. You'll love it. You'll love it. Thank you very much.